Seems like we just did one of these. Yeah, two weeks ago. It went by fast, I guess. You must have been having fun. Something like that. Okay, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Uh, not a lot of new news today. Um, let's see. Uh, the 64-bit viewer just failed a QA pass, so it. while I was hoping for an update today, I was hoping to be running an update today, uh, that isn't going to happen. Um, so hopefully early next week. Uh, voice, there is an update for. Oh, it we we did a pretty big refactoring on how some of the uh, launcher code worked, and uh, there were a couple of couple of minor bugs introduced, but they're they're annoying enough that we didn't want to release them on to, to put them out there. Um, and let's see. Uh, voice has gotten uh, an update, but it hasn't gotten through QA yet, just because it's the lowest, the last one on the list. Um, there should be another maintenance viewer, uh, new new maintenance viewer branch um, out, probably early in the middle of next week. Um, and that's. The hot news, uh, you know, the previous maintenance viewer, as of when we had our last meeting, has since been promoted to the default viewer. So 507 is now the main thing. Uh, and at some point soon, we will probably uh, pull the plug on some old ones. We haven't done that in quite a while. But uh, there's any huge hurry for that. So uh, let's see. And uh, you you all got to experience the fun last Tuesday, I'm sure. Uh, you, you have a strange idea of fun, Oz. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that was that was not one of the better days. Let's just let's just say. Uh, but we got through it, and as a matter of fact, uh, it turned out to be a pretty good test for one of the changes we made. Not that we would have preferred to have that, but it did work out that way. So, um, and as usual, there's lots and lots of uh, uplifting of infrastructure on the back end going on, uh, lots of server work to get operating systems updated and various other components updated. Um, and that's all that's all ongoing so lots of the simulator releases you'll be seeing will be motivated by that and and web website releases and some other things um, place pages has gotten a lot of really good fixes so if you have a region or a parcel and want to brag about it on a web page uh, place pages is a great way to do that so um, I think that's what I have for news. So the floor is open. Uh, I have, well, I thought I only had, well, I've only got one question, but uh, first of all, a uh, big thank you to April for the blog post. Uh, made it clear to some of our users that it wasn't a viewer problem. It definitely was on that. Back end. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid that was definitely on us. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's really good to see that you're posting uh, post mortems or debriefings, whatever afterwards. Um, the one question that I do have is, hi, Grumpity. Are we getting any closer to the uh, state tool changes? Um, <laughs> we are um, picking them back up. There was uh, a time period where we kind of went pretty much heads down on the crashes in the viewer and so far fingers crossed we seem to be getting a better grip um over that and so we'll be picking estate tools things back up um so before the end of the year but maybe much sooner okay and as an added to that is is there any possibility of larger bandwidth I wouldn't bet on it yeah well I but there's a bet distinct on it either, possibility but I have to ask. there's a distinct possibility of better bandwidth management good that would be wonderful <laughs> Because we just recently had to clear the uh, gateway ban list. <laughs> it's only twice this year. We cleaned it in February. We cleaned it in July. That's not bad. So, thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, predicting dates is just really, really hard. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Because yeah. as soon as you say, it's okay, we're ready, it's coming out tomorrow, we yeah. will find a bug that says, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> right. Well, and, and you know, uh, we we end up with discovering some some new thing that is the is the hot fire that has to be attended to and the development projects just get stopped until the hot fire gets stomped down. Um, so um, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way our team has to do things. Uh, sorry, it's not just your team. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have understand it before I got into this with the, the viewer team, but uh, I totally understand now. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to have to roll them back afterwards, Grumpity? <laughs> yeah, there's also that. I'd never tell Whirly that you were thinking of that. I actually remember that. Oh my god, I'm in the cornfield! Well, Whirly enjoyed your mistake anyhow. Or whoever's mistake it was. So no other no other hot topics today?
uh, if if there are not already bugs filed on them, feel free to file bugs. Any, just make sure you put you know what build it was. Uh, unfortunately, one of the things that's not perfect about the the 64-bit branch, and one of the reasons why we wouldn't promote it yet, is that we're not reliably getting crash reports from it. That has, at the moment, that is mostly due to the fact that the back end is, the, the crash analyzer is not working right. But we're working on that uh, full-time right now, so... Hopefully that will get sorted out pretty soon. Cool, logs are good. We we do have some changes in this in the in the current development builds of the sixty four bit branch that should capture more information on that pipelining problem. We hope we'll capture more information on that pipelining problem. Uh, I actually don't think it's unique to the sixty four bit branch. It, it, I, I mean, I'm, in fact, I'm sure it isn't. It just happens more often there. So, but we're we're actively seized at that. Yeah, I know. Gee, this could be the all-time shortest third-party viewer meeting. Kitty's question? Uh, is there work done on increasing the texture memory limit? Um, yeah, it's not in the 64-bit branch yet, but it's proceeding independently and will eventually be merged in there. So um, we're going to, we're going to give, uh, we're, we're going to do that. We're also doing some reorganization of the cache um, and some optimization of the cache. Uh, the, and, uh, gathering more statistics on the cache so that we know how well it's performing. And uh, yeah, I know it, it is scary, but uh, we've, we've got, we've got a bunch of issues. We've got a bunch of issues there that uh, needed attention. So um, I'm actually thinking it will probably be, um, be better once it's done, but we are going to allow it to be bigger.
that should help a lot, actually. Well, one hopes so. Uh, we're we're going to change the format of the data that we're storing so that um, rather than storing the JPEG 2000 data, we're going to store the raw data that's after after decoding, uh, and it significantly increases the amount of the amount of textures you can load per second um, when you go to some place you already have all, everything in cache. So, um, pretty helpful, I hope. Um, I'm not. That's not integrated into 64 bay yet. Yeah, the other change it makes, which I um, strongly, that that will make, which I strongly suggest you think about, um, uh, that you that you keep, is we expanded the, the cache version guards so that, for example, if you change versions of your image decoding software, KDU in our case, uh, or if you change from 32-bit to 64-bit, or a couple of other things, uh, the the cache will uh, get wiped and we'll start a new one. Uh, just mostly that's paranoia, but uh, it seems like pretty well justified paranoia. So, so for example, when you first get that version, it will it will wipe out your cache and start over. Yeah. The difference for us is, as Worley says, 32 and 64 bits have separate dash folders. So. Uh -huh. Right. Well, we're going to be making ours bigger by default, and uh, and potentially taking up a lot more disk space. So we just decided that we should. And besides, that shouldn't happen very often. I mean, we only update KDU, you know, once or twice a year, and. Uh, any given user, unless they've changed their computer, shouldn't be switching between 32 and 64 bit builds. Uh, unless you're whirly and you do it just because you can't stand it. Yeah, I, I put my cache up to the highest too. Um, and the highest will get bigger. Uh, are you guys doing any work to increase the size of the static VFS cache or get rid of it? Uh, we're making some changes to it. I, I, I wouldn't characterize them yet. We're not done. Okay. Um, I, it's, I'm... I am not convinced that the 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 single big file thing is actually worth anything at all. So but yeah, we're it's trying to instrument that. It's terrible, and it's limited. If you try to ever increase it to one point five gigabytes in size, yeah, uh, yeah, I I believe that, and it's it's possible that we will end up getting rid of that altogether, but um, that probably won't be in the first round of changes. Uh, there, there are no disadvantages I know of, really, to making the cache, to maxing out the cache size. The only reason for having, having the Having the limit uh, is so that people can control how much of our of their disk we use up because Second Life can use up a lot of disk. Yeah, but disk space has gotten lots cheaper since those limits were set. So we're going to let people make them go much bigger. And it will. Yes, it does use more for caching raw textures. It does, but it loads them faster.
I have a... Yeah, don't, don't listen to him. Squid cache of the entire <laughs> SL asset, everything I've ever downloaded. Squid cash, you are nice. No, group, group notices are currently not getting any love at all. Sorry. And it's not likely that they will anytime soon, actually. We're, we're pretty much slammed with everything we're doing. Just have a network wide squid cache that's like seven terabytes right now. Uh, you've got a long way to go to get to the whole asset system. Believe me. A I mean, long, long way to go. I could. I could do that thing where I just use unlimited cloud storage and then just keep shoving it in. I wonder if I could fill that up. I think you'd discover that the bill was pretty substantial. Um, I mean, it might be worth it. All right, well, if there are no other hot topics today, I guess we all get to go back to work early. I was laying on the floor. Uh, was there one that I missed? Anything on inventory? Uh, well, inventory is getting a lot of attention these days. Um, we're, we're doing some infrastructure work on inventory. Um, whether or not it will have user visible effects remains to be seen. Yeah, the Matria issue is one of our biggest at the moment, I believe. I don't know what the Matria so, issue is. I think I know what you're talking about, and we need a region where the issue reproduces before it's restarted and goes away. Yeah. Otherwise, I yeah we saw nothing in the log. Oh, that one. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's there's nothing to go on, but we're not ignoring it. Right. That's even that, the the issue where there's an the the timeout message. God, I had that Jira open too. Uh, 10515, mm -hmm. right? Timeout message on the CDN URLs where it's really redirecting to an internal LLDNS address? Yeah, so unfortunately, by the time that we got our hands on Cyclops, it was restarted, and the issue stopped reproducing, and there were no other regions where it would reproduce. Um, and all the other logs we had, and the sim state that we grabbed also didn't help, because putting that sim state on a test grid was effectively a restart, and therefore uh, didn't do anything for us either. So we need a, a live repro.
Yeah, I I have not been deeply involved in the in the debugging on that one, so I, I really don't have any more details. But as she said, if if you can if you can find a region where it happens, let us know. Mm, trust see, us. If, see, if, see if you can talk the owner out of re restarting it right away. Actually, Whirly already has instructions that she can contact support and yeah. arrange that one of us gets pinged before the region gets restarted. Great. If it's findable, we'll find one. <laughs> Alright, well, speaking of which, um, I know that uh, Firestorm support's already on it, but uh, that McAfee total protection issue is... <sighs> You will have people reporting it. We need a repro on an SL viewer. That will help us lots. So, oh, that issue. I'm mad at that issue. I know. It made me really heavily consider spending $600 on an extended validation co-signing cert just to get it to go away. Signing all the viewer DLLs. Oh yeah, that's a thing you can do to get it to go away. Uh, I think it's triggering on something. Possibly the DLLs being unsigned. Because the main viewer binary itself is signed, which usually makes most antiviruses less angry, but the shared libraries aren't, so they get a little bit iffy on that. So you might want to take a look at signing the DLLs that the, that the Lindens build too. I mean, hey, it, 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 it's, yeah, it was as, that's, the McAfee thing is as, uh, it was annoying as Bitdefender likes to flag Alchemy as malware. And the Alchemy website as malware. I hate those people.
the algorithms are it's malware unless you sign it with one of those fancy code signing certs that you have to pay too much money for every year. From the approved vendors of them for that specific antivirus. Ha, Yeah, the the attachments on region crossing thing is something we know about. Um, it's it's really a set of race conditions, uh, and I'm not sure it's it's on the list, but we haven't gotten to trying to put together a, a permanent fix. Yeah, it's definitely gotten some love in the sense that time was spent to understand what's going on and how the proper solution would look. Uh, but it's no small feat, as most things in Second Life are. And especially anything that involves region crossing. And attachments. Right. See if I can throw a VM together and poke at the McAfee hatred. And I'm less hungover. Yeah. I... I'd imagine it's some setting or something in McAfee that somebody poked or multiple people poked or a setup wizard. Something weird. If it's not reproing for everyone that uses McAfee. Um, Barley, you said Alexa can repo what on the Linden view or the mesh attachment or the attachments falling off on region crossing or something else? Oh, yeah. I don't see why it would be different on any other viewer. Right. It's it's not it's not really a viewer problem. Uh, Worley, do you know if the McAfee thing repros on the Linden viewer at all? No. We don't know. Oh. No. Well, we if it's not, no. if, if it's not reproing, it also could be that it is giving the Linden viewer a pass because you people actually have a real code signing cert. We've actually had people refuse to go on the Linden Lab Viewer test. More than one. Sadly. I know why I... It, it's... I have some ideas of why it's triggering on those specific four things, too, because those specific four li uh, libraries also do some really interesting things to work. And glods is full of death and hatred. Test it later, tomorrow.
Chaser, uh, the only way you're going to get find out if they're relevant or not is by throwing them out into local chat. If you wait your turn, the meeting will be over. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the way we roll here. There is right. It does do some really terrible things to the CRT. Oh my god. Excellent animation. Uh, it's not. It's not frozen until we ship it. Um, that is until it becomes the uh, unless it's until it's in Agni main channel. Um. Their document for the internal object LOSD data. You mean, uh, is there a document for the for the LOS the LOSD data for an object? Is that what you mean? Yeah, there are there are documents for LSD, but I don't think that isn't how I interpreted what he what number two was. Um, and number three, how does the server calculate the avatar physics seen here? Uh, I it's um, gray magic. Yeah, it's. Um, if what you meant is the physics cost, uh, I think there is a document on the physics object oh. on the server. Yeah, um, yeah, that varies quite a lot. I'd imagine it's generated. Yeah, it's it's a the capsule is just generated and resized based on the avatars. Oh, the physics, the shape of the physics. It's yes. not calculated. It's fixed. It, it is? It, oh, yeah, uh, it is. Well, it's a fixed shape. It gets scaled um, when your height changes and maybe some other times. Um, but it's a, it's basically a, uh, a kind of a prism. It's um, It's got pointy ends and, and roughly cylindrical metal. Why can you... Why do they stack so well? I don't know. I always assumed it was like flat on top. Uh, I'm not really sure. There. Yeah, in general, we don't we don't try to document the internal data structures because we might change them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. The viewer code is the best documentation there is on how to interact with things. The viewer and doesn't actually get objects as LLSD. It's sent as an object update packet thing with bi right. arbitrary binary data offsets. I was actually staring at that the other day, trying to figure out how it worked. Then got a headache. Yeah. So, sorry we couldn't be of much help there, Chaser. Um, <laughs> it's okay. All right, I think we're pretty much done. Last call? Nope. Chase is right. typing. Yeah. If you show up in his office, he'll give you a coffee. Yeah, we always have coffee here. All right. Thanks, all. Uh, thanks, us. See you in two weeks. Grumpy, us, thank you very See you much. In two weeks. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I. Chaser, I will here have some documentation on how object updates work. And data on the server isn't actually, a lot of it's stored as integers, unsigned integers that are then multiplied into float values. I, or was it divide? Uh, I'm dead right now. Fuck. <laughs> Even if you didn't get the answers that you were looking for, Chaser, at least now you know the protocol here is uh, free for all. Throw your question yeah. to bug until you get an sense. answer. I'd make more sense if I wasn't like horrendously hungover. Yes, scaled. Scaled is a good term. <laughs>